the world has an irritable bowel syndrome epidemic. People's assholes all over the world are facing great distress. And I mean all over the world. Chinese assholes, American assholes, Middle Eastern assholes, South American assholes, Russian assholes, all assholes are really facing uh, difficult times. These are difficult times for all human assholes on planet Earth. And uh, of course the medical field loves to uh, come up with a name for a disease, this is, because they need consumers to buy their pills, their products, and uh, they want to make money. The pharmaceutical industry and the medical industry are have got to be one of the top five industries in the world in uh, generating profit. So they have to come up with a name for everything because for them this ease is the natural state and anything else is not right so that's how I grew up I grew up thinking that this ease is the way of things I had a headache all the time took Advil every single day so I used to think you know this ease is the natural way of things it's the natural way of, of life and uh, that's exactly what the pharmaceuticals and the medical industry want us to believe. So they'll always come up with a name for it so that they could sell you something. So they uh, saw that everyone's asshole is in great distress and uh, they thought, well, let's come up with a name, a name for it. So let's, uh, let's call it irritable bowel syndrome. So here, my sweet friends, take this, uh, take this spell. We really love you. We really, really love you and we really care for you. We want you to get well. So here, here are some pills. Take this pill. It'll calm down the, the nausea you're feeling. It'll calm down the pain you feel in your nerve endings, in your uh, bowel area. Now, they say there are more nerve endings in your uh, intestines than there are in your brain. Right? It's a brain on its own. So... Anyway, here's a pill. It'll calm you down. It'll suppress symptoms. But of course, there will be side effects. But uh, we won't tell you about that. And uh, here, here, just a quick little band-aid solution. So they love it. You know, ADHD, right? Here are pills to numb you down. No, ADHD is simply energy being suppressed. You ever been in the presence of kids before they get social social con socially conditioned and brainwashed and bogged down in school they're adhd quote unquote their energy is all over the place that's just energy adhd is just energy but he let's suppress it because you've got to fit in in the school system here take some pills take adderall it'll calm you down make you uh a law-abiding citizen a law-abiding student rule-abiding student Right, so you know that's uh, that's for them. They they want to put everything in in labels. So the reason why you have irritable bowel syndrome is that you have been eating junk food, things that don't belong in your body. Plastic, you're putting in plastic. For example, when you eat pasta, you're eating plastic. That's plastic. Now you, your body's organic. It's 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 of the earth. It's organic. It's a living thing. And it's incredible and it could take the pasta, it could take the plastic in, in like, uh, you know, you buy candy and stuff, that's plastic too. It could take it and it could turn it into life, actually. It could, it could do that. It could extract some energy out of it because everything is energy. But it takes an immense amount of energy from your body, life force, to do that. That's why you feel tired if you eat these foods on a consistent basis. You feel fatigued, you feel exhausted, a headache, right? So irritable bowel syndrome is putting all kinds of unholy things that just do not belong in a human being's body for many, 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 many years, causing a buildup of toxicity, of mucus, of all kinds of unholy fluids and substances that bog you down and make you feel tired and take away from the life force. And that stuff builds up in your bowels, causing 
the nerve endings there to feel pressed, right? Their tension, tense, causing all kinds of pains to occur in your intestines. All kinds of painful sensations. These are the nerve endings there screaming for help. Inflammation. Inflammation is the body's natural response to heal itself. So if you get stung, I got stung by a spider a month ago, big spider. And a big inflammation happened in my, I think it was my left arm, just inflamed like it, you know, it became like this big and red because the body was like, we've got to deal with this. This doesn't belong here. Whatever the spider put in the blood doesn't belong there. And, and so, you know, within about six hours, it, it deflamed. The body was able to handle it pretty quickly and deal with it pretty quickly. It deflamed. Next day, actually, it was fine. It was as if I never got stung by a, by a spider. But it hurt when it got stung. It really hurt. It's like somebody put a big needle in there. Uh, so inflammation is the body's natural response to heal itself. So... With constant abuse, constant assault on your intestines with things that don't belong in there. You've got this body that has, it's, it's taken millions of years of evolution. It adapted to certain very specific foods, just like, uh, you know, animals, you know, they, they eat their specific diet. They, they, I mean, a lion has a specific diet that it eats, right? And if it starts to eat vegetables and fruits, uh, if, Lion's gonna get sick. You know, humans, same thing. You know, it's it's basically raw plants, mostly fruits. So now you're putting plastic in there. You're putting all kinds of things that don't belong in there, toxins and and just things that you know your body's like, what the fuck is this? Like, what are, what are, what the fuck is this? Your body's like, and it, and it starts to adapt to it because your body's so intelligent because it's got the life force intelligence. Uh, but it, it it has to use that life force to be able to convert some of this food you're putting in into energy, some of this stuff, if you want to call it food, into energy. And then it has to rid itself of the waste and the toxins, which takes immense energy, which causes disease and it blocks the blood flow and causes erectile dysfunction and cancer and blah, 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 blah. Over time, you know, it just, something's got to give. Right, the body just can't rid of rid itself of the toxins at the rate that you're putting in these toxins in. The equation doesn't add up. You don't get to that zero sum state, that equilibrium state. You get in a state of dis ease. So a buildup of toxins, a buildup of uh, plaque, mucus, all kinds of things in there. Inflammation, inflammation. Body's constantly trying to heal itself. So your intestines, your, your bowels end up being constantly inflamed because the body is in a perpetual state of healing those parts, healing those organs. And so your nerves there suffer and the painful sensations, it, so you become chronically inflamed in the intestines. You experience chronic pain because the body is constantly trying to heal itself. And then you have a buildup of toxins and material there waste material there dense stuff so then you experience what the medical industry loves to call irrit irritable bowel syndrome which rather is just which is simply actually just a you know we could just say it's just a natural progression of the of the law of cause and effect that's what it is it's doing things it's breaking cosmic laws really you're just breaking cosmic laws the cosmic law says this is the natural foods plants raw plants fruits primarily are the natural food for human beings that's cosmic law now you break that cosmic law you will suffer you will put yourself in a state of dis-ease and disharmony okay so that's irritable bowel syndrome. How do you get rid of this? How do you experience serenity in your bowels, in your lower organs? 
I uh, up until a year ago, I uh, had not even a year ago, <laughs> even less. I started the whole cleaning up business only maybe nine months ago. Yeah, so last year I was still eating plastic stuff like junk food, uh, chocolate and stuff. Not every day, but I was still eating them. But I was eating meat, which, which I mean, meat takes... We have a 30 feet long digestive tract. Animals who eat meat, they have a short digestive tract. They, you know, like a, like a lion's digestive tract, the meat passes within like, what, two to four hours, passes through the system. So it doesn't have enough time in that digestive tract to uh, rot. And then, uh, so for us, we have a 30 feet long tube. So it takes forever for meat because it's devoid of water and fiber. It takes forever for me to go through and it causes immense uh, pressure on your kidneys. So then it rots in there and it gets blocked up. It blocks up in, in the digestive tract. It just kind of gets stuck to the, to the wall, to the, to the gut wall. So up until a year ago, I was eating, you know, a big salmon piece every single day. <laughs> big, big, big piece. I'm talking like, uh, you know, I'm holding the selfie stick here, but big one. Big one, okay? Every day, and eggs. And I was having, I was mixing them up with fruit, so I would eat that with bananas, which is a terrible, terrible combination. It causes fermentation for, for, the, for the sugars in the bananas. I mean, you know, I was chronically uh, inflamed and I had chronic ir irritable bowel syndrome. It didn't start to alleviate until about nine months ago. And, and I say start to alleviate because I was still having it maybe every other day, etc., etc. I don't have it any longer, and I'll, I'll sort of explain to you the, 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 the process. So, in the beginning, I was so clocked up that I, uh, I was desperate. I was so desperate that I, I tried a year ago, I remember, just around December, around December, I tried ketogenic diet, I tried just to eat uh, butter and uh, avocados and salmon and eggs in the hopes of alleviating the problem because I did not have the eyes to see that this is a problem that is being caused because of the foods that I've been eating since I was two years old. I didn't have the eyes to see it. I thought, well, you know, just change the diet. Something's got to give. I tried the Weston A. Price diet. I tried everything, everything. And then I've, I start, I've come with the knowledge, I've come across the knowledge that uh, maybe, just maybe, this irritable bowel syndrome that I'm experiencing, this constant pain and inflammation, is uh, the natural result of decades of uh, dysfunctional eating. And I've realized that there is a whole host of things built up there, stuck to the gut wall. And that I've, if I wanted to alleviate this, I would have to do something drastic, something different. So I started doing some fasting, some water fasting, two-day water fast, three-day water fast. And right around the second day, I just feel a lot better. Like less pain, less inflammation, not totally gone, but less. And I was like, okay, I came to realize that first of all, I'm consuming way too much. We're consuming way too much. I, I don't care what you're eating, you're consuming way too much, more than likely. You're consuming way too much. And truthfully, the human organism is not built to handle all that much because, you know, your, the stomach is the size of a fist. That should tell you everything. The stomach is the size of a fist. So if, even if you're eating just fruits, which is the ideal food for the human body, if you're going to consume something dense, the most ideal food is obviously nothing. But anyway, that's a different, uh, that's a conversation for a different video. So I realized that first of all, I was consuming way too much. So I took whatever I was consuming and I halved it. So I think around the time I was doing the counting calories bullshit, I was consuming 3000 calories. I cut it down into half, about 1500. Instantaneously, I felt a lot better. Instantaneously, some of the, you know, the symptoms were alleviated to a, to, a, to a certain extent, but still I had it. So I was eating whatever I was eating, salmon, blah, 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 eggs, and you know, fruits. I was eating like bananas and avocados, lots of avocados. 
Uh, so I just cut it down into half. So I cut down the salmon, the big salmon piece into half. Instead of having six eggs or eight eggs at the time, I was maybe got four, started taking another four. I felt better. Felt better, you know. So that's the first thing you want to do. Whatever you're eating, just decrease. Decrease it by half. Chances are, if you're watching this, you're way overeating way more than you need. Way more. Whatever your diet is. Even if you're eating a 1,500 calories worth of fruits, chances are you, could get, you, you would feel better with half of that. So that's the first thing I did. Started to help. Still, the problems are there. The inflammation is still there. Pain is still there. The, the, the nerve endings are, are still clearly uh, experiencing discomfort. But, you know, in reference to what I was feeling, which was chronic. Oh, God, I, was, I remember I was doing the driving Uber. And, oh, uh, like, you know, you're trying to drive and you're oh, in these weird positions. And I had just had dinner. And, oh, man, the kinds of things that were happening in there. And here I am driving and I'm starting to get irritated because I've been driving for two hours. And my stomach is acting up and I'm feeling the, like I'm pregnant with something. You know, I always wanted to take that big, 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 big shit like Randy took in South Park. You know, if, if, you, if you know the episode that I'm talking about, because I was hoping if I take a big shit, a shit big enough, maybe I will, this feeling of constant, I'm constantly pregnant with something may go away. Okay, so, you know, lots of, oh, here's Lucy. Lucy! So, trust me, when I say I had that problem chronically, it was chronic. I'd go to bed, and again, I feel like I'm pregnant with something, and it's painful. And I'd sit there sometimes 45 minutes just slowing down my breath so that I could calm my nerves enough so that I could sleep. Okay? But again, I halved whatever I was eating by half. It got better. Sleep improved. Everything improved. Reference. But still, the problems were there. So, on to the next step now. I found out that... Uh, I found out about Arnold Eritz's book, The Mucusless Diet. I start to look into it. It turns out, you know, the the ideal food for the human body is fruits. I did a lot of reflection on it, a lot of meditation on it, took some psychedelics, asked the psychedelics, is this true? And it was clear that it's true. So I began, <laughs> there's Lucy. I began, I embraced, uh, hey, uh, uh, you're wet. You've been, you've been laying in the water. We've been laying now. She's a wild dog. She loves she loves the elements. I saw her the other day. I saw her the other day there, like right there. And she was just laying there like in the grass, just laying there, like bathing in the sun, bathing in the grass and the elements. Uh, so found out that fruits is a is is the ideal food for the human body. So I uh, started the predominantly fruit diet and Nothing improved. Nothing improved. Uh, it, it, it really didn't improve. I was having the same pain. Uh, I guess I was introducing a lot of fiber into the system. Like a lot of fiber, which my body wasn't adapted to because I was getting a lot of my calories from, you know, meat and eggs and stuff like that, butter, etc. Uh, it didn't improve. It didn't improve. It was too much of a shock. So, but I kept it. I kept going with it. I kept rolling with it. And I had realized that that isn't going to work neither. That I would need to take some break from digesting solid foods altogether. Because I was still experiencing the same pain. I was still experiencing the inflammation. You know, I was eating like 10 bananas and that was too much for the digestive system for my for the clogged up waste that was in my in my intestines so i was still experiencing pain i mean i was eating 10 12 bananas that's a lot of fiber and if the system it's like think about it like this if you have a tube and it's clogged even if you're putting the ideal food in the in the body it's clogged it, nothing is going through yeah it's, it's not going through it's a tube that's clogged so I, uh, that's when I did a 21 day juice fast. And I would say that was the beginning of the true alleviation of this chronic issue that I had, this irritable bowel syndrome, so-called irritable bowel syndrome. Look how beautiful she is. 
Oh, I'm gonna miss her. I'm leaving by tomorrow. I'm gonna miss her. So, um... So, it took uh, some, some drastic measure. It took a, a 21 day intervention, no solid foods, just the juice fast, and enemas. I highly, highly recommend enemas, okay? There's a lot of shit that's stuck in there. A lot of shit that's stuck in there, especially if you have this problem chronically. So, a 21 day juice fast, consisted primarily of watermelon juice, apple juice, and grape juice. Because, the, you know, they're, they're, there's no fiber at all in those three. Like zero. So, uh, just a complete rest for, for, for the intestines. Specifically the large intestine, which is where most of this garbage is stored. For 21 days. And daily enemas, once or twice a day. It's a tube you put in your asshole. And then you put water in there. And then, uh, you know, let it sit there for 5-10 minutes. And then lots of starts to come out you start to see like worms and parasites in there it's nasty so after 21 days uh, I went from feeling very dense to feeling very light and then I uh, I started eating fruits but this time it was a whole different ball game because I had a cleaner tube the stuff was actually going through the fiber was actually being broken down by the bacteria and things were going through uh, and I didn't stay entirely on fruits. I talk about how since I came to Thailand, I've been uh, on and off and I've been sort of going on binges and trying different foods, Thai food, Burmese food when I went to Burma. I've been going to these vegan restaurants and eating this, you know, vegan junk food and whatnot. Uh, but I'm done with that stage now and I'm back to uh, raw foods. I'm back to fruits. Uh, and in a moderate uh moderate quantities i'll tell you okay like i'll give you an example of what i ate yesterday i ate a watermelon i have medium-sized watermelon not one of those big ones uh those small bananas it would be an equivalent of three medium-sized bananas and the mango shake like a, a half a liter half a liter between half a liter and a liter that's about it and i was Actually, I thought I ate too much. Okay, so now I'm back on the fruits. I've been on the fruits now for a while. In moderate quantities, I'm focused on the intermittent dry fasting, which is, you know, uh, I'm doing about 16 to 18 hours. Uh, and uh, <laughs> irritable bowel syndrome no more, my friends. That's uh, part of my past now. That's part of the past story. That's, uh, I realized the state of this is an illusion. You know, I shit once or twice a day very easily boom right sometimes i do an enema sometimes i don't sometimes it's just i don't i don't i feel like there's perfect emptying so i don't even need to do an, an enema uh, but it really took that 21 day juice fast to clean up some of that clutter because although i had switched to an ideal diet at the time i was still eating too much of it period and i was so clogged up in there i mean this is a chronic issue that i've had for years I was so clocked up in there that it, it really almost didn't matter what if even if I ate the ideal diet, the fruits. It, too much fiber, too much. To, you're, I'm sending too much solid material through a, a clogged up tube that has been clogged up for years, that have been inflamed for years. You see. Uh, so yeah, after that, and and with a bunch of enemas during the 21 day uh, juice fast, a bunch of enemas, right? I do like about two a day. You know, the enemas are powerful. They'll really clean you up. They'll really clean you up. If you're not, especially if you're not putting in any solid material in there and if you're giving the digestive system a break, the, the intestines, the, the, the large intestines a break. Uh, that followed by a fruit diet in moderate quantities, okay, because we really need very little food. The stomach is the size of a fist. That should tell you everything. And uh, irritable bowel syndrome no more. I mean, in fact, now I don't even perceive of it. It's like in, from from my point of view now with this way of, of, of living right now, with this way of eating, it's like that's that's not even possible in my world right now. I've uh, like in this vibration, in my new perception, in my new way now of being, it's like that's not even a possibility. Like it's like what irritable, that's not even possible now. It's like an impo 
I know I can make it possible. All I have to do is get myself to a restaurant, a vegan restaurant, mind you, and eat some of the delicious cooked foods that they have, right? A, a falafel sandwich or something, right? And, uh, you know, I could eat that for a couple of days in a row, a bowl of biryani with all the spices and some lentil soup and like a naan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello, irritable bowel syndrome. So I know how to make, how to manifest it again. Okay, I mean it's uh, I could manifest it within the next hour. There's some pretty pretty nice vegan restaurants here. I've tried them all. You know, I've 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 had my fair share now of of those uh, of those moments, and I've I've been a very very diligent observer of uh, of the way these foods are affecting me. They're affecting you know the smell of the shit, the smell of my armpits, the smell of my breath. Uh, the intestines and you can get a pretty good idea once your intestines are clean and you're on a clean diet and you're not experiencing painful sensations anymore you're not experiencing inflammation anymore so then now you have because I could have easily said when I first switched into the fruits and it still wasn't helping I could have been like look even fruits are, I'm still inflamed because I was clogged up but once you clean up the tube and then and then once you get on a an optimal diet that would be fruits basically uh, and then you see day in day out you're not experiencing any inflammation you're not experiencing any irritable bowel syndrome you're not experiencing any painful sensations then now you're in the position to be an observer so you could go out go and eat those other foods and just observe and 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 so you really get a good idea then of uh, of the magnitude of this thing you really do so I know how to manifest it, but I know as long as I'm just eating in moderation and it's just fruits, huh, there is no way in hell I'm going to experience irritable bowel syndrome. Not a chance. That's like living here in the tropics and uh, having it snow. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, okay, that's just not going to happen. We're not in, in, in the state of uh, evolution of Earth or the in a place in the earth's evolution where that happens maybe millions of years from now or millions of years ago but not now it's not gonna happen in the same way if i just keep eating fruits and if i just keep eating in moderation and i keep doing these intermittent dry fasts that doesn't that's not perceivable that's not good the irritable bowel syndrome thing is not good it's this does no longer exist in my world unless uh, you know i get tempted and i follow the temptation and uh but I think I'm past that now because I've uh, allowed the desire to fall away on its own by in fully indulging in it. I'm a big proponent of if you have a desire, fulfill it and fulfill it and fulfill it and fulfill it until you get to the law of diminishing returns and until you feel the pain from it and until you get the contrast. It's good to get the contrast. Like if you're on a really clean diet right now and you know what I'm talking about, but you really want to be reminded of this, go out there, get a falafel sandwich or something or a pita. You know, a vegan pita, you know, bread, falafel, uh, some hummus on it, hummus, right? Hummus. And, uh, you know, all these inflammatory foods, you know. Uh, and eat it and uh, observe. Or go and get some potatoes, right? I mean, potato, get some cooked foods, you know, cooked potatoes, uh, rice, get some rice and uh, lentils or something, uh, or beans. Okay, and, and observe, right? And it's good to get that contrast. And, and uh, over the last three, four months of me just having these desires and fulfilling them, I got to fully experience the contrast. And once now I got back on, the, on, on, on track with the fruits and in moderation, I keep the intermittent dry fasts and everything. Yeah, that's, that's just impossible at this point for irritable bowel syndrome for me to experience irritable bowel syndrome. So here I am a year later, I thought of something that I had ex suffered with for many years. I thought I was cursed with this. Me and my, my brother had the same thing. Still has the same thing, he's working on it. And me and him used to think it's our genetics because my mom has it, my dad has it. And we used to just blame it on the genetics. We used to say, well, we just have really sensitive gut, uh, gut. that's what it is. Like, no, no. Everyone's, everyone these days has got irritable bowel syndrome because they're eating all kinds of wrong foods. And there is a buildup of all kinds of unholy things in the intestines for years, years, folks. Okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, that's how you get rid of this, uh, this evil, 
the state of dis-ease this, that we're calling these days irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. All right. Thank you to the Patreons for your support. I love you guys so much. And if you would like to join in, there is a link down below. $2 a month is uh, like uh, all that is, you know, like required to become a Patreon member, uh, part of the Patreon family. Uh, and in return, you get my eternal gratitude, you know, if that means something. Okay. <laughs> and... Uh, Instagram, Saeed Mobayet. Been loving to chat with you guys. I always do. So hit me up in Instagram if you've got something to say, something you want to take up personally, a video request or anything. I love you guys. And until the next time, may the force be with you.